Okay, today we're going to download and install GSAC. So I'm going to go to the GSAC website of www.gsac.net and I'm going to download version 8 and it's going to ask me if I want to save or run and I'm going to hit save just in case I want to reinstall it. <clears throat> and then we wait till it downloads. Once it's downloaded, I'm just going to go and view my download. It's running security scan right now. And I'm going to ignore my warnings here and just say let's run anyway. Here we go. Yes. Next. Accept. Next blah 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 next I'm just gonna create a desktop icon for, for the fun of it. Normally I don't do that just because it messes up my desktop but then I'm gonna click next and hit install and then we finish and launch GSAC now this is the first time that I've ever used the version 8 of GSAC, so it's going to be a learning experience for me too, but it should be fun. Would you like to open GSAC has detected this database needs to be optimized to get better performance? This is a once-only process, but it may take a while. So I'm going to hit yes. <clears throat> I'm going to hit OK. Oh, and look, I've used this before. So it already has my uh, pocket quarters that I've installed myself. So let's do something new. I'm going to maximize this so we can see I'm gonna to go to geocaching and this is new to version 8 geocaching.com access I'm gonna get geocaches telling me that I need a membership to geocaching.com to use this um, so I hit OK Connecting to geocaching.com server. Remember, login. Allow access. I'm going to go back here, download my pocket queries. That's a better way. Now I have set up my pocket queries Utah Pocket Query 1 through 22. And I'm just going to hit, I guess I can click on all, hit OK. And it's going to automatically download my pocket queries. Now, before in version 7, I actually had to go to the website, download each pocket query individually, stick it in a specified folder, and then come into GSAC and import all the uh, pocket queries. Uh, but now with version 8 and the live API, it just ties right into your geocaching.com account, pulls it down and looks like it is fetching all my pocket queries that I have defined right now looks like we're almost done and here we go now it's loading my pocket queries automatically oh this is beautiful and I'm gonna let this go for a bit now it looks like I've loaded 
Waypoints loaded in the system, 20,000. New waypoints added to GSAC, 1,500. Existing waypoints updated, 14,580. Waypoints already existing that are up to date, 4875 additional. And then it will tell me how many was in each pocket query. And just to note, pocket query, 23 has a thousand. That's the max you can have in a pocket query. So that's something that I got to go and edit and make sure that I start a new pocket query. Um, if I get more than a thousand, I'm missing some. Anyway, that is how you import your pocket queries into GSAC. And it's going to blink here and then refresh with all the updated. Inside of GSAC, we see Yellow is for the ones that we found. Red is the ones that we found that have been disabled. Green are the ones that I own. Um, and if I sort, which I do, I have sorted by miles right here. And I'm going to sort again by miles. If I sort by miles, it tells me that I have found all the geocaches. Here's one within 0.24 miles of my home coordinates. Um, so I need to go out and find this one and this one and this one to be 0.26 and the goal, you know, I have a personal goal of getting all the geocaches within 10 miles. And so I got some work to do on mine to get all the geocaches within 10 miles of my home coordinates. Um, so that's it on the importing into GSAC using the new geocaching.com access um, live API that GSAC 8.0 provides.